Welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how I paint these light and airy roses and the techniques I use to bring them all together. So we're going to start by looking at a rose. I love to have a reference. Notice how the center is darker and tighter and there's these C-shaped curves and as they go out the leaves open they get lighter. So what I like to do is break these down into shapes. So I'm going to show you how to create these different types of leaves, the larger ones on the outside. And I'm also going to show you how I do leaves for roses. So I'm just going to waken my watercolor. I'm using Winsor & Newton on a palette. This is a ceramic palette. And I'm going to use a size 6 and a size 8 round brush. I will link my supplies. I'm going to start with this pink color. You can use any color that you want. This is Opera Rose by Winsor & Newton. It's the perfect pinky color for this rose and see how the center has those C's so you're going to practice going with the, more like the tip of your brush and pressing down slightly you're going to practice making these C shapes you can call them crescents half moons C's whatever you like but we're going to go this way add a little more color practice this is all about practice this is about waking up your hands you're building muscle memory is what I like to refer to Honestly, add some red if you want to play and now you're going to go the opposite way. Now this way for me, it doesn't feel as natural. It is a little bit more challenging. You can maybe hold your brush differently, angle your wrist differently. You have to find out what works for you. For me, it's just practice. It's just getting used to it. And sometimes I'll move my paper around so I don't have to really do that movement. Now I'm starting to use the tip of my brush and I'm starting to make these C's very small and tight. And that's gonna help for the center of the rose. Now for those larger petals, we're going to press down on the belly of the brush. See how I'm swooping in that C motion? And you're gonna do it the opposite way too, but see that from this angle, you're pressing down on the belly of the brush, see how it opens, and then you come back up to a point and that's, that's how you're going to get that sharp tip. Now see how horrible <laughs> that was? And it's it, I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. But as you just go and you kind of get used to it, it starts to loosen up your wrist. You start to feel like, okay, I could do this. So now we're going to go in and this is where I'm going to do this interlocking. This is going to be the center of your rows and this will make sense. So that's not perfect. We're going to keep practicing. There's no such thing as perfection. So this is how you interlock them. Now this is a little bit too far apart. You want to leave space in the center but you don't want to do this. You don't want them to be facing each other. You want them to be interlocked. I've noticed that a lot of people start by doing this and this is just, I don't want to say it's wrong, but this is not going to give you the effect of a rose. So it's good to practice but that's not that's not what we want to do. We want to go back into the color if you need and then we want to just sort of interlock and we want them to be as tight as we can. But also you want to leave space because in watercolor, it's very important that you leave some space. I mean, you can go in and bring highlights out different ways, but space is good. So now we're going to start to sort of stagger and go around the center, adding more leaves. This is from a better angle. So we're going to hook those in the center, just interlock. And then we're not going to go right around. We're going to hug it around and we're going to bring the petals around and then again. And this is not perfection. We're just playing. We're getting loose. We're learning the techniques. Now we're going to try to put some larger leaves in there. So pressing down and you see how it opens and the water color sort of bleeds out. And you don't have to add any color to your brush as you go out because you want them to be a little bit lighter. So you're just going to add water and sort of blot that brush out, tap it on the side, blot it on a piece of paper, and just keep going around. And you can go in with a larger brush. So I'm going to go in with a size 8, and I'm going to start making larger petals. So this is a little dirty. That's fine. We're practicing. But I added a little bit more color and more water. And see how I'm wiggling that? And it's very, very light. It's translucent. But there is still that pinkish hue. This is kind of what we want to achieve here. And you can always add color back into those leaves. See how they're wet? You can always drop in color. But now we're going to look at the leaves. See how they're rounded, oval, and then they have these little points at the end. And then they have a pointy tip. So press your brush down. See how it's pressing? The belly is opening. And then come back up to a tip. And that's a simple way 
to create a leave. Now, this one, not so good, but we're still learning. Okay, let's try again. Press down, slowly rise back up, and you have this beautiful leave. And it's, you're letting the brush do the work. See, I'm using the tip of the brush for lines. This will be great for your stems. And now we're going to try another technique where we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to sort of move our brush to the left, a little swerve, and then back to the tip. And then start at that starting point again and move your brush to the right. See how I sort of curve that and come back to the tip? And you can always play with it. You can add the spikies in now, or you can wait till it dries and add them in after. I like to do it first because once it dries, there will be a little bit of a line there. But I like the look of that as well. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's really what you want to do. So keep practicing. You can leave a little white space in the center. So I'm doing the same technique, but I'm leaving a little bit of space in the center. So you have that line there. And that can act as your center line of your plant if you want to leave more negative space. Now this one's fun. You're going to press down and you're going to wiggle. And this is going to give you a nice, organic, beautiful leaf. See how pretty that is? And you can't really mimic that again. So that's the beauty of watercolor. You can try and try, but nothing's ever going to look exactly the same. And I just love that. These are for your long, skinny leaves. You just press that brush down and drag it for as long as you like. And then come back up to the tip. Now we're going to try to put them all together. So let's make a leaf here. And then we're going to make a stem with the tip of our brush. And just practice this. Keep practicing until you feel comfortable to move on and put them all together. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm just going to keep practicing. I'm going to put some lines in my leaves. So once that's dry, you can go in and add your details. If you do it while it's still wet, it's just going to pull up. So you can use a smaller brush if you want, or you can just use the tip of your brush right now to practice. It's really what you feel like doing. So here, let's put some, see how we put the spikies at the end? Um, you can kind of see where, where it starts and ends, but I'm ready to go on to the next step. So I'm gonna show you how to put all these elements together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the center of the rose. I'm using, I loaded my brush. I have a darker pigment on there. So less water, more paint. And we're going to do these crescents and they're just going to interlock see how those interlock then you see how i went around and sort of hugged i didn't go the same exact direction you want to kind of overlap these petals so i guess the word is stagger so we're just going to go around but we're not going to go in the same exact spot and make sure you see how i'm leaving space little white space if you put them all on top of each other, you're just going to get a puddle. It's okay if they touch like that. That's perfect because that's where you're going to get those beautiful bleeds. But see, as we're going out, we are opening the petals up. So this is the center of the rose opening up. So, and as we get further out, we're using less paint, more water, and we're going to get those really beautiful light and airy petals coming out. And again, you can always add more color in. So don't be shy to just work with like very, very pale water. That's where I implemented some wiggling. And you see this made this beautiful space for me to sneak in. They're all going to be different. Use your rose or your reference photo. It really is helpful. And um, I made a little mask. So you can, if this was a real painting, this is just a practice sheet. But I would use some clean water blot it set like this with your brush sort of wiggle it around with clean water and then use the paper towel and you can just pick it right back up it's like it never happened i'm um, using this larger brush again this is a larger round you can use any brand you want i love princeton this is the grabby one that i'm just i had it on my desk so i've been using this one and look how light and pale this is beautiful and it's just ever so light and it's gonna dry and it's gonna look different so you have to be patient with this process and you never know how it's going to dry and that's what I love. So now I'm going to add some more bleeds in. So this is when you drop some more color in and you let the watercolor do its magic. This isn't something you can mimic and I just, again, I just love that. So it is easy to overdo it because it's so fun, but it, you have to learn to stop <laughs> because you'll just keep going and then you'll or overwork the piece and it'll just be like, okay, I need to stop now. So the petal dried a little, so I added a little bit more water. It was still damp, but not damp enough to create the bleeds that I wanted. So I'm just gonna drop in some more pigment. 
so that these have a little bit more contrast in the center there. And now we are going to go in to our green. I'm using a sap green mix. You can use whatever green that you'd like. And you're just going to start adding these leaves. Now we're looking at it from the top. So we're not looking at it from the side. So the leaves are going to be from an aerial view. So this is as if you're looking down at the rose. So I'm just going to go in and just exactly what I showed you. This is one technique. And you can spread that watercolor out. You can make the shape if it doesn't come out nice when you do, like, see how I'm making the shape. And then I'm going to add the little edges while it's still wet. And it's going to create this beautiful mixture of the green colors. And, yeah, you don't have to overwork it. Find another spot and do the same exact thing. So I feel like maybe right here. So I'm going to just pull it down. This I could have used a little less water, but that's okay. This is how we learn. This is how we practice. I still have issues. <laughs> um, it's a finicky thing. Watercolor can be a little overwhelming, but once you get the hang of it, water control is probably the hardest part about watercolor. So it's just learning that happy medium. And working with more water gives you a lot of more of a loose, flowy, airy sort of look. So I do enjoy actually working with a little bit more water. And then I also like adding in some stems. It gives it more of a natural look. So we're just gonna practice different shapes. I'm trying to do all different types of leaves just to show you that you can do whatever you want. There are no rules. I'm just gonna keep filling in the spaces and trying not to overwork it. Again, you could go overboard with, with these leaves, but it's fine. We're practicing. Paint as many leaves as you want. And I'm just gonna, I always like to add little filler pieces. So when you get a bouquet, you know, they have little, they have baby's breath or they have sprigs. They have these little filler pieces. So that's what I'm doing here. Creating lines with my brush, the tip of the brush. Any green that you want, you can mix some blue, purple, whatever you like. And then I'm just doing these little stippling dots with the tip of my brush. And again, it's not super realistic, but it's giving you that look. And then I felt like I needed to fill in my rose a little more. I'm using very pale pink. And we're just going to go in and bring in some more washes. So once it's dry, you can put another wash on top if you like. You can put lines in the petals. You can do whatever you feel like you need to do. And I'm just going to show you the side profile of the rose. Now this one's a little bit more intricate. I'm using the belly of my brush and just making the side profile. And it is great to look at the rose. Now, I do a lot of loose interpretations. This is not going to be perfect. I love those bleeds. So I like to tap my green in while it's still wet and let it bleed. And then this is the sepal of the rose, those little pieces that come out from underneath. And they just kind of loose and flowy. They come down to a point. And then from that sepal, we are going to bring down the stem. And I know you're probably looking at the bleed and the petal, like what's going on there. And I'm not concerned about that because we can lift that up. So I'm just going to do the stem here. And I'm going to add these little tiny stems to add the leaves. Now I notice that's too small, so I'm going to go in and make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to keep going. Maybe make the stem a little bit longer. This is just for practice, but... We are just trying to get it as realistic as we can. And see, this is what I'm talking about. You can pull that pigment up and even create that highlight. You got to work kind of fast, though, because it will dry. And I do like the look of that. But also, sometimes it looks a little bit messy. So I'm just going to add in some more highlights. Some, so the tip of the petal has a little bit more of a darker hue. And I'm just going to add my little highlights in, add my shadows, anything that you feel like doing after it's dried, that's fun. That's on you. Do what you want. Look how pretty. And this is, um, this is really it. This is how I create my roses. And it can get addicting. <laughs> but then you have to put the little lines in the leaves. You don't have to, but it does add just those finishing touches so using the tip of the brush and these lines again they you can take as much time as you want these are not perfect by any means but it gives you the idea the representation of a rose and I always 
<laughs> get my hand in my paint. I try to work from left to right, but it's not always, uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Just gonna add the finishing touches to this rose. I'm actually gonna add like a little bit of a brownish red to the stem because I noticed on my reference that roses have this sort of reddish brown. Not all of them, but this one did. And I'm just gonna do these final little touches and really make those leaves come to life. And you see how at where they meet, there's that beautiful bleed. Look at all those pretty bleeds. And that's it. That is how I create my loose watercolor roses. I hope you enjoyed this longer form tutorial. I plan to make some more, but let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you would like to see next.